growing up in this neighborhood, and this neighborhood was called South Baltimore at yes. that point. When you looked over in that direction, you didn't always see a football stadium. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts when you look over there now, or in the highway, too? Because we see the highway and the football stadium. It's, it's just... It's, it, it, that part does not seem like South Baltimore. Because uh, this was not here when I came up. Now, when I came up, when I looked towards the west, that's the west, I can uh, visualize the train tracks, I can visualize uh, whole type manufacturing, cat park, rubber hills, sweetheart cup factories. That's what I, that's what I visualize when I look towards the west. That's and this is, and this is the only thing that just does not. I can identify with, because I remember what was there before this came. As I call to my mind, I think about the beautiful homes that were over there. We, some of our most beautiful houses was across that bridge, on a Warner Street. Uh, Hamburg Street, Cross Street, Briscoe Street. Uh, my Aunt Vi used to live over there at 1018 Warner Street and had a beautiful home. Two-story row house, beautiful. My godmother uh, and her husband, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Savage, they used to live at 609 West Hamburg Street. And it was beautiful homes over there. And that's what gets me when I when I look around and see all the beautiful homes <laughs> was torn down just to make, just to build up this uh, stadium and this highway. And it just, it just makes me, because they didn't, I feel as though that they didn't try to, to do us any justice because at that time I was still living over here. And the, the houses were not the, a lot of blacks did not own their homes. And, and, and the landlords did not, bother to keep the homes up and and then the like I said the best quality homes for blacks were on the other side of the bridge and those were the ones that were and those were the ones that were, the that were torn down because the the house I was born in the house that my uh, mother died and the house where my father lived they are still standing they are still standing so you remember when the city started coming in and bulldozing and yes, just yes, houses. yes, and it was very, and it became, it just became a, a ghost town. It just to see uh, the place where you was born and reared, and schools and the children, every you know, all your neighbors, and all of a sudden you come back down and look. It's just like it just uh, uh, vanished away, and and then to see what they placed it with and the other sections of South Baltimore where the other ethnic, ethnic groups live, nothing happened there. And that's what, uh, you know, saddened my heart to see how I believe and felt that, they, that we were taking the advantage of. Because yes, well, then that, I guess that's when we did find out we were poor. We couldn't keep up the house. We couldn't buy houses, but there were some people down here in this area, like Mr. and Mrs. Gordon, they lived at 1013 Leadenhall Street from 1904 up until they both died in 1966. They owned their home, and as a matter of fact, he owned a business, the Gordon uh, transfer business.